Hey everyone, Dr. Tim coming to you live with another episode of R2P Favorites. Today we'll be discussing dissociation or hip and shoulder separation, which is extremely relevant in sports like golf, tennis, and baseball. So as the name suggests, we'll be looking at hip and shoulder separation, but we like to split them apart. So the first thing we'll assess is shoulder rotation. Typically we'll take a stance where our feet are about hip width apart. We'll cross our hands across our shoulders and while keeping everything from the belt down very steady, we're gonna start rotating and seeing how far we could turn our shoulders and upper body with our belt and everything below it remaining in place. That would be the shoulder turn component. When we talk about hip turn, it's the opposite. We're gonna assume the same position, feet about hip width apart, hands on the shoulders, but now keeping the upper body very stable, we're gonna try and turn our lower body. Cues we'd expect for this one would be to point your belt buckle from one side of the room to the other while maintaining a very still and stable upper body. Next, we're gonna go over how to typically assess this with a patient. Here with me, I have Dr. Ashley Green to help us out with this demonstration. Ashley, if you would not mind, please stand with your feet about hip width apart. I'm gonna ask you to cross your arms and put your hands on your shoulders. Assume a slightly bent over position. And now without moving your hips or what's below your belt, I want you to rotate and turn your shoulders from side to side as best you can. I would stand here and assess the quality and Ashley's doing a pretty darn good job. But if somebody was struggling with this, which Ashley isn't, I would help her by, Ashley, hold on a second, stabilizing her hips, so providing her with some stability here and now asking her to continue to turn. Ashley was good at this from the start, but if somebody struggled with this, providing stability at the hips oftentimes allows somebody to rotate further at the shoulders. Now when we come to assess the hip turn, we'll assume the same position, so feet width, slightly bent over, hands on the shoulders. Now Ashley, if you could, try and keep your shoulders stable while you turn and point your belt buckle from side to side. There we go, we're off to a good start. Here again, we're looking for the quality of the movement. Does Ashley rotate as far to the left as she does to the right? And if she is struggling with this, then I'll ask her to hold for a second and I'll provide her stability from the shoulders and now see does her hip turn improve at all. We can look at the quality, but we can also always ask the individual who's performing the test if it feels any better or worse. She definitely felt better with the stability that she gave me and I felt better going to the right than to the left. There you have it. Next, we'll be going over the foundational move of creating a good shoulder turn. For somebody that struggles with something like this, this would be a great tool and exercise to perform to start to get a feel for what it's like to have a full and proper shoulder turn. We use a couple tools to assist in this. Ashley, if you would please put this ball between your knees. Light pressure to squeeze the ball, okay? And I'll ask you to take this dowel and put it across the backs of your shoulders and hold with your hands here. Now, while maintaining just a constant steady pressure here and the knees together, I want you to try and turn as far as you can to your right. Once you've gone as far as you feel like you can, we'll repeat the same thing to the left. We'll let Ashley do this a couple different times. And once she's gotten comfortable with the foundational movement, if need be, at the end range, I can assist her. Ashley, if you would, turn to the right as far as you can, and we'll see if we can turn any further. Hold here. Good. And then slowly release and turn back. Same thing to the left. Turn, turn, turn. Good, hold here, and come back. This is the most foundational turn for shoulder turning. In future segments, we're gonna expand upon this to get to a more advanced or complex level. Moving on from how we assess hip turn, we're gonna to go to the most foundational way that we typically teach somebody to improve their control and range of hip turn. Ashley, if you wouldn't mind, step up to the counter and I'd like you to put your hands on it to brace yourself. While the hands brace yourself, I still want you to assume that position where we're about feet width apart at our hips. We're gonna bend at the knees and the hips a little bit and we'll just get a slight forward lean. Now in this position, while putting just a slight pressure down and through the hands, I'm gonna ask that you begin to try to rotate the hips as far as you can to the left and the right again. 
The countertop allows Ashley the ability to stabilize her upper body, similar to how I did when I held her shoulders in the assessment. This is a great foundational movement because it requires no partner assistance to start improving your hip turn. In future segments, we'll expand upon the hip turn and go over more complex, advanced, or progressed versions of how to get a better hip turn. Once we've established a good hip and shoulder turn separately, the next thing to do is combine the two. Ashley, if you would, please again, assume the position where your feet are hip width apart, slight bend at the hips, hands on the shoulders. Now this is gonna be a challenge. I'd like you to turn your shoulders to the left and turn your hips to the right. Nice job creating separation. Go ahead and reverse that and go the other way. See, Ashley struggles a little bit more moving to the left side and that's okay, this is what we're working on. Right now, as we do this exercise, we're doing the two separately, but eventually we'd like to combine them together. But this is the most foundational way to combine our hip and shoulder turns so we can start getting true dissociation or hip and shoulder turn combined. In future segments, we'll expand upon and go over progressions for the combined hip and shoulder turn to make sure it's more advanced and relevant to the application of the sport. Once we've established that Ashley has a good combined hip and shoulder turn, we eventually want to train it in a very powerful or fast fashion. We typically utilize a med ball for something like this. This is just a foundational move for an introduction to some medicine ball use in creating dissociation and getting rotational power. Ashley, if you would, stand with your feet about hip width apart. I'll ask that you hold on to the med ball here. You'll take the ball back and away, and then we're gonna exaggerate a two-step process. The first of which will be turning your hips towards the target, which will be the wall, and then your shoulders and arms falling through second. In the beginning, for the most foundational move, the ball doesn't have to leave the hands. We're just working on sequencing. Ashley will take the ball away, turn the hips to initiate the movement, and then the shoulders and arms will follow. In the future, we'd expand upon this in a number of different ways to make sure it's more complex or progressive or relevant to the sport that you're playing. Dissociation, or hip and shoulder separation, is gonna be extremely relevant for anyone in a rotational sport. This most typically includes golf, tennis, and baseball, and it'll help us generate power that is so relevant to each of those sports. This will be a multi-segment component where we'll talk about dissociation or hip and shoulder separation, its relevance to sports, how we train it in various ways, and how we typically work on it here in physical therapy. If questions come up through the segments in the future, feel free to drop a comment below and I'd be happy to answer them for you.